Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Howling Stones. This is Sarleon here, and we are going to be making our way to the boss room in the West Wing today. Before we get that, I wanted to thank you all, and I've got a couple orders of business. I've got to address a couple comments that were made. One of them was one of my errors. Actually, both were my errors. So I want to make sure before we progress any further that we get these taken care of. First of all, Spiffy Biscuits, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Yes, I can link some more loot. I know I get going and some of this stuff isn't interesting. So, yes, I need to slow down more. Thank you for that comment. And then also MPTness made a comment. The skull engraved coin has a chloroplast effect on it. And that's just a ground spot just sitting it's the key to the boss room in west but it's just sitting there i don't know why it didn't occur to me to grab one click it delete it wait a couple minutes and pick up another one because it's a pretty quick turnaround time that it responds so another reason why howling stones is great for exp as a necro you get a free chlora was it blast or plast clicky but anyway, there you go. We're going to start working. These are the two guards, or I call them guards, in, that are in front of the... Now, this is a drop-off. So once you go down, you've got to levitate back. There's no easy way back up. you got to go all the way you know, into that room and levitate back up. But we're just going to let these... Let these, these theatrical theater puppets do their show. I just laughed at the ablations are funny because just like on the last video you saw, there's the cheap flux. But when they cast, they're like running and punching and it just looks funny. But we're just going to let them take each other out. Now, what I will say, I made a bit of a blunder. What I should have done is, yes, I should have taken down the feaster, but I should have used the oblation, charmed it to help me clear. And you'll see in a moment what I'm talking about. But the entrance, the drop off area to the boss wing, as I call it, is the hardest we've encountered yet. Even harder, in my opinion, than the north wing, because you've got. That pather, well, we'll turn back, but you got a pather at the door up above. You'll see. And then there's these side wings. So let me show you a map. It's kind of in this side wing. You see right there, I put around in gold. That's the kind of a void zone. But you got some pathers that are coming out of there along with these bunch. Now, there's more static mobs that are actually down in this pit area than what this map leads on so i'm right by the x mark that's where we jump down i would say total there's probably about five mobs down there a pather from the no fly zone and then we're gonna levitate in the blue kind of where that arrowhead is there's a path that looks out the door it will aggro you but it will run in the avoid zone and sometimes it'll aggro some other mobs so that's why utmost care must be taken when you jump down. Now, where I say I made the mistake here is I just kind of ran down in the wing. I pacified a few mobs, which helped with the undead deads. At least those, the aggro from the undeads was kind of tapered somewhat. But I had a lot of living mobs down there, which at least I won't get harm touch, but they're difficult to control without an even set of undead mobs to charm and take down too so yeah you'll all see what now now that i know and i wish again i i couldn't i didn't get this recorded but what i would normally do is i would pull a group one or two mobs up i would stand about where i'm standing and if you stand right on the edge and leave a pet park there the mobs will come up just onto that ledge, kind of where I'm almost where I'm pointing with my clicker, onto that ledge, and they'll just shoot straight up through the floor. They don't path around or anything, they'll just shoot up. But you have to be right on 
the edge there, right on the edge. Otherwise, if you're too far back, um, there's going to be some meth messy pathing. So when I've done successful breaks, the most successful breaks, that's what happened. That way I get the room split up and the pathers are less of an issue. However, this time you'll see the most messy way I did it, but still can hopefully turn it around. So learn from my mistakes. Hopefully, I wish I could give you a visual because visuals, a picture says a thousand words and a video provides exact instruction. <laughs> so hopefully y'all, let me know if, if you see this now and you're like, Sarleon, please, I absolutely want to see that. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I will be, if I get a couple, you know, one or two comments, I'll, I'll come back and I'll upload a video pro after this to help kind of show what that looks like. It's not always useful, but there's a couple other zones you can actually use that, like Burning Woods, the giant fort, to pull up two ramp mobs without too much trouble. But yeah, let me know. Just, just comment. Let me know if that's something you all want to see. Um, if I don't hear back, then I'll just assume that um, y'all kind of got an idea what I'm talking about. Now we're going to get started with the break here. Um, I did pacify the one undead I saw. Um, if it doesn't work to bring the mobs up, you can at least pull some to where I'm standing. And that door back there, you can at least, at least to the very least, avoid that avoiding the pathers that come along with it but you see there's the feaster it looks like a pather there's a golem bio golem that's just up up to the right there's a skeleton to the left on a little platform then there there's the bio golem in front of us now those are our three just static spawns i don't know the feaster might be a path or two that one that feaster up there by the door is certainly you see it pop its head in and out so I, yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, that feaster's a path or it'll go. But I think the feaster, I don't remember if it's that feaster there, but there's another pather up there in the no fly zone that I think walks just right to that platform to the right where the golem is. It's just up the stairs from it. So yeah, this is, this is a cluster absolutely make sure you're ready this is why a lot of people have a hard time getting past the west boss room is breaking is really tough i would highly recommend if you're just new i mean i'm not the best dungeon crawler i'm still get, i'm still learning but from what i've learned i've at least been able to you know get some get some solid um what am i trying to say solid foundations and some muscle memory some intuition about how to deal with crazy situations as they arise so but yeah bring a friend if this is your first time uh, two necros necro shamans great necro cleric necro enchanter Pretty much any caster. That way you got a you got a friend to help you in hard times. Oh, then our pacify wore off. So, yeah, got to keep that skin up. I think I had skin anyway, but. So we've got four living mobs and two undead. I am gonna have to start doing. So oh my, yeah. There's there's that path I was talking about at the top of the stairs that aggroed us. Or that one might, that might have been the one behind us too. I don't know. I was in in all honesty, I was being really reckless when I did this break. This is very this is quite unideal. If I were to do this again, I would have done number one. Like I told you, I would have brought them back over the ledge, half of them. Um, if not, then I would have just dropped down and pulled back some mobs and just stayed back there kind of like what what i initially did but then i moved out to the center the center i avoid it your first your first break here do not go to the center 
stay right past the ledge. <laughs> uh, but hey, it's just like I say. You live, you learn. You die, you learn. Welcome to EverQuest. Welcome to Howling Stones. One of the most, most dangerous, probably one of the most dangerous dungeons I've crawled. But it's awesome. I'm learning a lot. But yeah, at this point, um, roots are breaking. We've still got our pet working for us. Um, things are okay. I'm running out of mana, though, so... This is where things can really take a turn if you're if you're not careful. But got a bio golem and a feaster left. Let's let's finish these off and then find a safe spot to med. Now in this area, there's not going to be really any safe spots. I'll show you what I. That was awesome. <laughs> it lunged and died. Mid leap. That was beautiful. That's worth a clip. I'll probably forget that, that ever exists, but that was pretty funny. Anyway, I'll show you what I consider to be the most safe spot to med in this wing. There's a semi safe area. You're going to need to have invis, invis versus undead, and just hope that the pather doesn't happen to be AC invis. Bio Golem. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Woo! We did it. We cleared the West Wing in true dirty, skelly fashion. Now, this is the void area because I was a curious mouse. I went and checked it out. You saw that elemental bone had its back to us, which is good. We got I got really lucky if it would have pathed out. Oh, boy. I've actually had that happen. I walked back there because I was still learning this area. Go, pff, pff, hear all those harm touches go out. It's not fun. So if you're EXPing, I get it. You're, you're going to go in there and get some mods. But doing a solo run, eh-eh. Nope, don't, I just don't bother. Just don't do it. Don't do it. And here's our semi-safe spot to meditate. If you're extra cautious, now I know Ixar and I've got my Zlandikar heart, but we picked up that chloroplast metal earlier. This might be a good time to use it. If you need a safe way to meditate, it's best to use a lower lich, like maybe Call of Bones, the level 34 one, um, Arch Lich, and then just Feign Death. If you're Ixar, the HP loss will be negated quite a bit in Arch Lich. Um, otherwise, your Feign Death as a level 60 anything else is what, 5? Maybe six. So, yeah, if you use a lower level Lich, Feign Death, it'll at least get you some mana region in a very unsafe spot. So, keep that in mind. I use that quite a bit, actually. But as I was busy talking, we went and poked around the boss's room. The boss is not up. The boss is a skeletal procurator like museum curator i guess that's what i consider it so that specter is what the placeholder is now this is a little bit risky but it worked out since there's that you see that pather going in the hall i timed it so it was going away and then i pacified it as well if you're anywhere close to the door, it's going to aggro. So I'd recommend after you take out this room, if you're trying to spawn the boss, you know, wait till a little bit before the boss spawns and then take out all the pathers. That way you got a nice respawns 20 minutes. So if you take them out a few minutes, before you got a good 10 minutes to clear. 
Yeah, this guy hurts. He's got a shield, so that's going to cause him to automatically dual wield. That's why I liked him as a pet, but when they break, ew, especially hasted, they'll just chew you right up. But there's that path that I was talking about. It's kind of good because it pulled itself, so hey, that's always cool. Um, however, I'm sure my pacify, yep, <laughs> my pacify wore off. I don't know what you all are like. Of course, using Gina and Nparse helps, but I don't use those. I don't know if you all like have this algorithm in your in your head going that's ticking at every moment. Okay, I need to I need to recast this. I need to refresh my pacify. I need to refresh this buff. Or maybe you're all the more method you keep timers and go from there. I kind of just go with the flow, especially when I'm getting a mess and then just respond what I think is the most priority in that situation. Like getting this bile golem dotted up so it dies. The elemental bone and specter are taking care of themselves. One kills the other, it's so be it. I, you know, I, I lose the XP, but getting those taken care of, then getting roots on yeah I do the best I can but sometimes I just I I miss critical deep details when there's a lot going on but I'm I'm curious to how everybody else plays necromancer because I haven't you know met a ton of people but I've met some very organized minded necromancers they have at every moment what they're gonna do they know when they're Fear spell is going to wear off and some others that just kind of go with the flow. I'm somewhere in the middle. I don't have huge algorithms, but I've got that sense of adrenaline going where I'm going to do the most important thing I need to do right now. And see, we've already got respawn timers. Now, the respawn timers were not advantageous because it was right after I cleared the room. But make do with what I got. Ah, there we go. Got me. He harm touched me. But getting in the boss. Anyway, getting in the boss. Yeah, I'm somewhere in between. But kind of go based off of what's most important. Once we get back to our main point here. Now that we got the room clean. Once we kind of jump in here it's just going to depend what spawns here how we're going to break it the pathers won't be as big an issue because i'm going to pull more away from the door than i did last time but it just really depends on what does or doesn't spawn <sighs> that's kind of the trouble here is it's, it's crapshoot as far as what you get as far as um enemy loadouts sometimes you get all undead which it's kind of okay for necromancer because you can pacify everything but at the same time well if it's it's a living thing it causes you just to clear it and then if it's cleared it's not spawned it's it, it can't do you no harm for until it responds um, undead on the other hand you can pacify them all you can charm them you can keep them locked down quite a bit easier from what I've experienced. Written last better, more reliably on undead. This is just my experience. But on the other hand, you get too many undead and, well, <laughs> harm touch to death if you get a group of three or more. Once you get to this wing, yeah, they're starting to get close to the upper 400s, maybe 500. But I'd say we earned ourselves a break. So let's take a break. Now, yeah, here, here's that room is respawned. And so this would be a little, well, kind of a little bit easier to break. But you got a bunch of undeads. You can at least pacify and pull them down. So like I said, it just, it just, just really depends. Heck, if you got lucky enough, you could get all undeads and run back for another Chloroplast coin. But... I've had South 
and yeah, I, I've done all my recording for South and East already, but one time I had it that it was all undead and I could just sneak in there in Viz versus undead and sit at the camp spot. It was awesome. So sometimes you get really lucky. All right. And it's go time. So like I said, and like I've been retorting, wait for respawns and take out as many pathers as he possibly can for the best results. Um, once you get that done, then move forward into the boss wing and you'll have, in my opinion, quite a bit easier of time. So, oh joy, we get another bio golem. Yeah. Well, not the best outcome, but not the worst either. At least we didn't get harm touched. So, hey, I'm always thankful for that. Less man efficient to take these living things down, but you take what you can get. You take your, you take your wins with your, well, not really losses, but unluck, <laughs> as it might be. Yeah, I'm just going to fast forward through these. You all know what it's like to rot, rot bio golems. Quite, quite renowned quite frequent throughout different Kunark zones. Oh boy. All right. And there is our pather in the boss room. So, well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> I'm pretty sure these are all the three pathers. So you got the one coming to the door here. You've got another one that kind of goes in. It goes from, it basically goes throughout the whole no fly zone that I was telling you about and it is on the edge of the drop down room so you've got those two and then the boss room path or then you've got another path or to the room just to the right of here so I think that's four four total if you really want to get after it but all right got a Jasper we can steal skin all we want now so yeah I'm just gonna I think I checked earlier. Again, you could just wall hack and sit in there. I think it's when I checked it was two undeads. Of course, you want to. What the heck? Oh, okay. Well, I guess we got another path there. Um... Yeah, I, I guess probably three pathers in this room. One in the boss room. Yeah. I I don't even know. I I don't know. I just kind of took things as they came when I first got here. But um, we got it managed and taken care of. So that's good. I'm just going to let the sepulcher skeleton. I'm just going to let him be out of his misery with no experience to myself. That's A-OK -okay for me. But anyway, as I was saying before, we got harm touched, or no, beat by a feaster. He took off my entire mana skin. Ugh. It's one of those moments I wasn't paying attention, and it doesn't make as, you know, when I hear my bones cracking, that's obviously an indication, okay, I need to do something. But sometimes the mana skin, it sounds like a dull punching bag, like, and I don't always hear it at first. <laughs> so it just tore through my mana skin. <laughs> no. Anyway, as I was saying, I think it was all undead when I checked last in the boss room, which holds the advantage that we can pacify everything. Now, I pacify the boss. It makes it easiest so I could just go in. The boss is a shadow knight, so it's going to have a pretty big harm touch, too, if we get... If we, um, we end up aggroing, you know, and also another one. So that's not a good start. We don't, that's not a start we want to make. And then also the boss summons. So you want to be very careful. You can root it. You can CC it. Like if you wanted to come in and try to screaming Terry, you can, but the boss is going to have a little bit bigger, bigger aggro radius than normal mobs and I think you're going to be close enough sitting in the door 
to where the boss spawns that yeah you're you're probably going to aggro it before you can cc it so if you're okay with taking a harm touch and a couple hits you can use that because it is the skeletal procurator is a little bit more difficult to pacify as i'll show you <laughs> but you can do this one of two methods you can just look in here which i did uh, make sure you got your charisma gear on okay good you got the blue message not the red oh look at that look at how big that puppy is yeah okay we got him pacified um now i should have pacified him last but that's okay um <coughs> It is what it is. But yeah, just a reminder. He is a level 52 Shadow Knight, which means he will, or the the mob will summon. The mob will summon, so be careful of that. And we're just going to throw all the bones. Throw out the pure procurator. Now what I like to do, the method I like to approach here is I just want to burn it down as soon as I can so it's an undead I'm gonna keep my life tap up make sure I get my keep your life at a hundred percent at all times <laughs> otherwise this could turn into problems if it's not keep a life tap up and I kind of fumble around here just checking to see how I do now you see my my charm pet the elemental bone He's going down pretty quick, pretty quick. So I know that he, it's not gonna stay up and I don't wanna have to deal with summons. Now I'll show you some better way to deal with summons, but I didn't know this information when I did this. So we're just sticking to what I was thinking in the moment. Um, it's basically no root use rooting if you're gonna be nuking because you're gonna break your own root anyway. So it's a lost cause. If you dot it, then I don't dot it when I'm using this method, especially for summoners, because I want to I want to land a screaming terror to give myself plenty of time to readjust and get um, a, a good last hit or charm the other greater warbone there. But you see, this is getting really close. I'm just nuking him 725, 725, 725 got a sliver of health left oh we're so close but okay now I'm gonna cast my screaming terror but it summons me so again what I do to deal with that screaming terror I don't know why I did touch a knight <laughs> probably top off my health all right and we've done it we've taken down the skeletal pro procurator and got harm touched immediately when we got done because why would why why would why would anything go perfect here but let's check out what we got now the broken sacrificial blade that is the key to south it's also got a dmf clicky and then we got ourselves a kylong chest plate snow drop kind of sucks i doubt that's been an upgrade for anybody traveling these halls since Kunark came out but there you go that's the boss's loot now the best thing we could get off the procurator is a what is it mask of obtenebration which is the erudite illusion for bards and rogues but from everything i've seen it's been now that we've got that completed now yes there is a teleporter pad in the room back to the entrance but i wasn't quite ready because i was going for another and this is what happens when <laughs> the procurator resists your pacify and it's all living except for one. Okay, let's run to that telepad. Come on now, open. Open, Sather says open. Okay, go, let's go, come on. Okay, we're gonna, oh no, <laughs> they followed me. Oh my gosh, I'm done, I'm done. There's no way I'm making this out. Oh my goodness. And the topping on the cake is I got hit with heat blood right before I faint. 
So I didn't get casted on, my fane didn't break, but we got out with our lives, everybody. I live to see another day. So I'm going to lie here and collect my thoughts. The path to knowledge in this keep is a grave ordeal. The minions of Sather hold no quarter even against their own. I am enlightened, yet even I can consider a momentous predicament. I hold the B mysterious manuscripts here to point to the path that Sather came to study from Inaruk. Perhaps this is all a blunder in weighty miscalculation. All in all, conflict brings me to life and rises my potential. It better not to ruminate. Let's let doubt torment the mind, body, and spirit. That is why I am not caught under a collapse from the rubble of the rumblings from these tormented souls. Maybe this pernicious prowess of beer repugnance of every being comprising a soul is the true secret of Sather's 